Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. I figured instead of doing a shooting video today, we could just take a nice walk outside, check out nature, listen to some birds, maybe see some deer, turkey, bald eagles, or owls or something. But what the heck is that? <gasps> what did I just find? I've heard about these before. These are the fabled fell off the back of a supply truck. E. Sappy, U.S. Army plates. Well, it isn't the range if we're not testing body armor. We should go test these right now. <laughs> and you all thought I wasn't gonna shoot anything today. I've got the gold standard here. This is a U.S. military issue e sappy or Enhanced Small Arms Protective Insert plate to test today. These are made by Ceridine, part number 92608-L for large. These are slightly larger than a standard 10 by 12 NIJ level four plate. I have been asked a few times to test some military issue plates from my followers. So I happened to get this eSappy Revision E from SOF Gear You Want on Instagram. It was nice enough for him to let us get some of these to test. Essentially, eSappy is like NIJ level four. It has to stop two rounds of M2 AP at around 2880 feet per second. There are some 762 by 54R and some M855 threats that these are rated to stop as well. I'll put a picture in picture of this particular revision's threat ratings. I think they are at revision G or J now. I think G came out in 2013. So these plates could be quite old. They were being sold as government contract overruns. So your mileage may vary. While I'm not an NIJ lab, I try to stick to some of the NIJ protocols for a little bit of consistency. I always test hard armor at 45 feet, unless we're doing some other kind of testing. I've gone out to a couple hundred yards before. I use a giant clay briefcase filled with non-hardening clay to act as a compressible media. Although it's only about 35 degrees outside today, hence the jacket and the coat, that clay will be hard and will give us an underrepresentation of back face. It's just good to have it there instead of just throwing the plate up against something. While these plates are not NIJ rated, it has a ceramic strike face with foam protectant. So we've gone ahead and dropped each of the two plates on its face two times to do a preconditioned test. Since I'm kind of curious at how these stack up against the NIJ threats, we've got 556308, our 300 wind mag, and a couple other threats depending on how this goes. Before we get into today's test, I'd like to take a single moment to thank our sponsor for this video, which is my wallet. It's very light now after purchasing a pair of those plates. So if you felt I did a good job of this video, please like and share it with your friends. This is the first time that you are tuning into my channel. Maybe the clickbait thumbnail got your attention. This is the giant clay briefcase that I use for shooting armor. It's approximately 16 and a half by 16 and a half and fill with that non-hardening clay. Walk around at the back here. We have a wood backer that we use there. Here is our plate number one. The eSappy plates are actually an in conjunction with plate. So we're gonna use some of this Botac Battle Steel uh, level 3A as a backer. Mainly this is for blunt force trauma reduction versus actually stopping any rounds that make it through the ceramic. All right, our cameras are going and we're ready to start this test. I think at the beginning, I forgot to mention what these eSappy Rev E's are actually made out of. These are made out of boron carbide or B4C, which is the hardest of the three available ceramics. Alumina is the white ceramic and that's the lower end stuff. Silicon carbide is, or SIC is the middle of the road, harder, but not as hard as the B4C. The B4C and our SIC are a grayish color Typically, these are really good at stopping some of more of the advanced AP threats, but they tend to be more brittle, so they degrade faster. This plate is only about three quarters of an inch thick. Like I said, it's an in conjunction plate, so that extra back face protection comes from wearing the vest under it. This particular large plate weighs about six pounds or 6.3 pounds. Our first threats that we're going to use are our M2 AP. We have a standard pressure NIJ load at 2880 feet per second, and we have an overpressure load 
I accidentally just dropped both of these on the ground, so I'm not sure which one is going to be the overpressure one or not, but we're going to find out. I do believe it's this one. We'll take a shot at the upper part of the plate, and then we'll go see what we did. We've got a 22-inch TC Compass with a Phantom M2. That was our NIJ spec load. I just broke one of my straps down there. Way to go, Matt. That was our overpressure load. Very good jump in velocity. Hopefully I don't lose too many rubber straps today because I only have so many of these left. I gotta make another run to Menards. Here was our M2AP. Here was our plus P plus round more than two inches away from each other. I would consider that a fair hit. Place your comments below. Uh oh, Raggy, that is a penetration on our plus P plus round. Got a hole there in our clay up who knows where in the back of there. There's probably a lot of projectiles in here, but interesting. Normally when we've tested level four in the past, most of those plates, regardless of the ceramic type, were able to stop that plus P plus round, even going somewhat fast around 3,200 feet per second. That's going to make me rethink some of these threat profiles that I shoot at this thing next. Let's get it all strapped back up there and see what else we can do. All right, we'll check our 5.56 five, threats. I've got a plethora of them for you. I've got M193. M855, M855A1, which is the Army's newer 62 grain enhanced performance round. SS190, which is a 5.7 load, 31 grain projectile with a steel tip in a 5.56 case. And the Holy Grail, M995AP, our tungsten core, 52 grains. Very uncertain about this, as I mentioned in the opening video. Rev G and J are officially rated to stop three rounds of this. I don't see why this one couldn't stop one of them, but we'll find out. We're using our TC Compass again with a 22 inch barrel. Got a Yankee Hill Turbo 556 on there. We're going to shoot three rounds of M855A1 at it and see how it does. Drop that one on the ground. I have no doubt it will stop M855 and M193, but since we use those in other videos, I wanna include them in here as well. I'm putting my gloves on, because I am getting cold. Although the sun came out, it is now blinding me. So the M193 first will go right under the original M2AP shot. Good velocity there, even 30 degrees, M855. Now our A1. Our A1 again. This is a Winchester uh, 2017 lot, so it's got pretty good velocity. A1 again. Now that 5.7 round, we should see really good velocity out of this guy. That was not good velocity. I can't tell if that says 37 or 31. Maybe uh, You guys tell me. And now our M995, I want to go in the lower corner. 3397. Wow. Our plate is starting to get a little messy with all these shots. I think we still have some good area left. But anyways, here's our M193, M855, A1 number 1, 2, and 3, M995 down here, and SS190. Place your bets in the comments below, mates. Straps are coming off. Thank you.
Oh, no pass-throughs, folks. Even on the M995, there is just a little baby dimple there. Dimples everywhere else. Interesting. Let's do a torque test. It's not sounding too healthy there. Realistically, we got a couple more shots left on this plate right here and maybe down here. We'll, we'll do some, some poking around and see what else we can throw at this plate. I wasn't quite sure why the velocity on our SS190 was so low. So I took a couple shots off camera to check the velocity and that was what we got with the couple that I shot. So I'm gonna take two more shots on this plate at the upper top just to make sure we're getting that good velocity. Although, as I mentioned before in some of my other videos, velocity when it comes to ceramic armor isn't always the key performance for defeating it. You also need bullet construction and SS190 likely does not have that kind of construction even though it does have a steel penetrator. There we go, 3660. Didn't get a reading off that one, but we'll go down and see what we did. All right, here was SS190 shot number one and number two. Not sure why we didn't get a velocity off number two. The sun did come out from behind the clouds and it could be messing with the chronograph, but these results shouldn't be surprising. No pass through there. Shot number one and number two. Even in this compromised spot, it, it did break the backer a little bit, but that round just, just does not have the bullet construction to penetrate ceramic and polyethylene. Now, if it was polyethylene only at that velocity, yes, it probably would go through. All right, back to our 30 cal threats. We have a TC Compass in 308 Winchester with a 22 inch barrel, same Phantom M2 suppressor on there. We have some M80 ball, which is 145 to 149 grain, full metal jacket, depending on who loads it, around 2,800 feet per second. We have M80A1, which is a 130 grain copper core projectile with a hardened steel penetrating tip. That's around 3,000 feet per second. This guy right here is M993AP from NAMO. It's a 130 grain tungsten core destroyer of body armor. Now, we're not gonna shoot this out of the 22 inch barrel against this plate. We're gonna use a 16 inch barrel because there is a level above ESAPI called XSAPI, which was designed for more advanced AP threats over in Afghanistan and Iraq that the US military, military never saw come to fruition so I don't even think that those plates are really deployed at all so we're going to use the 16 inch for that but we'll test maximum velocity out of these other two rounds we do have some good spots left on the plate for these the m80 we're just going to put right in the middle somewhere where I've got a clean spot 2711 that was some ppu And this one's gonna be the bottom of the plate, right in the middle. 2904. We'll go check out what we did, folks. Well, I don't think there's much of this plate left after I abused the crap out of it. Here was our M80 shot right next to that M855. <laughs> there's ceramic falling everywhere. This giant hole right here is our M80A1. I wanna try to save this spot right down here for our M993. We may have to cut the cover off and see if there's a solid piece of ceramic left there. Sorry about the camera in the back turning off. Oh, no pass through. There is a dimple there and there's a dimple there. There's more back face, I think, you know, not too much more back face than the original M2AP shot, which isn't too bad considering this is a compromised area. There is more down here from the M80A1 shot, but it stopped those. Level four 
that we've tested in the past from the NIJ has had no problem stopping the M80A1 even at the 300 wind mag speeds. I think at this point we'll stop the test on our e Sappy Rev E. I cut the fabric and some of the foam away down here in the corner to check for the M993 shot and there's cracks everywhere. You should be able to hear this from my microphone but you do a torque test on ceramic plates and when you can squish them and make all kinds of noise and ceramics falling out and they bend really easy. Usually that's a good indication that there's not a lot of strike face left inside of here. I will tell you what though, if you guys want to see me use M993 against this e Sappy plate, let's get some likes on this video and get, get the views up a little bit and we'll take the second plate that we got from SOF gear you want and we'll start with the 12 and a half inch SBR in 308, then go to the 16. And if it actually stops both of those, then we'll use the 22 inch. Those rounds are very expensive. That's basically a hundred bucks for those three shots. But in the name of four science, it's always worth it. As another king of armor destruction comes to a close, I always take a moment to thank all those that help make these videos possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. I used funds from them to purchase those plates. Number two is SOF gear you want for having these available for us to purchase. And number three is you all for watching. I gotta go, the Altama Maritime Assault Boots are really good shoes, but not so good at keeping the cold out and my feet are cold. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.